Joseph Collins, and today I will be discussing the idea that social media is bad for society. The argument that social media is detrimental to humans is common. In my own life, I've often told friends that I'm addicted to Instagram or Twitter. And as I find myself scrolling through my Facebook feed whenever I have a spare moment, I wonder if something is actually wrong with me. The argument that social media is detrimental to society centers around a few beliefs. One of these is the belief that teenagers are somehow addicted to using it. This addiction then isolates them as they are spending too much time looking at their screens instead of interacting with others. However, Dana Boyd points out in her book, It's Complicated, that social media is inherently social. Teenagers using social media are primarily using it to interact with each other, whether by texting, sharing photos on Facebook, or commenting on a peer's post. She also argues that childhood changes from generation to generation. Teens now often don't have many friends within walking distance, and many places where their parents may have hung out with friends are now deemed unsafe. Social media allows teens to stay in touch with each other, especially when they are restricted from spending time with friends for whatever reason. Teens who have busy schedules, after-school jobs, or responsibilities at home can utilize social media to stay in touch with friends and get updates on plans. The argument that social media is forcing us to be less social is false because it overlooks the main point of social media, which is to connect people together through a medium that is accessible to anyone with internet. Although this seems to be somewhat intuitive, the belief that social media is bad for society is still predominant in our world today. Why is this? For one thing, the media effects model, as David Gauntlet says, treats kids and teenagers as inadequate. Since they aren't categorized as adults, they must be considered to be something less. This belief is applied to teenagers' social media use when adults claim that teenagers are addicted to social media and do not have the self-control or self-awareness to responsibly use it. In reality, the majority of teenagers are self-motivated enough to know when to put their phones down and get their homework done or go to sleep. For example, during high school and my time at university, my friends and I would often set aside an hour or so to study without going on our phones to use Instagram or Twitter. While there is a percentage of teens who are on their phones to the point of missing sleep or handing in late assignments, Boyd points out that this is true of many things, for example, an alcohol addiction, overeating, or even being obsessed with a hobby or sport. This fear that social media is detrimental to society also stems from the belief that the latest and greatest technology is somehow evil. In 1978, Jerry Mander published a book in which he explains how watching television is harmful to viewers. He even compares watching television to going to sleep with the aftermath of alcohol and Valium. This same type of fear-mongering is being used as an argument against social media, since it is a relatively new media channel. To make matters worse, social media is used most frequently by younger people. In January 2017, Pew Research Center published a report that stated 86% of 18 to 29-year-old Americans use social media, which is a higher percentage than any other age group. Because social media is not used as frequently by older age groups, it is easy for adults and parents of teenagers to believe that social media is isolating and addictive. They may not understand just how social these social media sites can be because they are not familiar with how their kids are using them. The argument that social media is detrimental to society because it isolates people, particular teens, simply isn't true. It stems from the belief that the latest and greatest technology always comes with adverse effects. People also use the media effects model as a defense for this argument by asserting that kids and teenagers are not able to have a critical understanding of the medium. At the end of the day, as Boyd points out in her work, social media is inherently social. Teenagers want to connect with their peers, and social media allows them to do so.